Hail, Holy Mother, who gave birth to the King, who rules heaven and earth forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, may we be set free by, from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head, while you strike at his heel. To the woman he said, I will intensify the pangs of your childbearing. In pain shall you bring forth children. Yet your urge shall be for your husband, and he shall be your master. To the man he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat, cursed be the ground because of you. In toil shall you eat its yield all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you as you eat of the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall get bread to eat until you return to the ground from which you were taken. For you are dirt and to dirt you shall return. The man called his wife Eve, because she became the mother of all the living. For the man and his wife, the Lord God made leather garments, with which he clothed them. Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing that what is good and what is evil. Therefore he must not be allowed to put out his hand to take fruit from the tree of life also, and thus eat of it and live forever. The Lord God therefore banished him from the Garden of Eden, to till the ground from which he had been taken. When he expelled the man, he settled him east of the Garden of Eden, and he stationed the cherubim and the fiery revolving sword to guard the way to the tree of life. The word of the Lord. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begotten and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. 
You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In those days when there again was a great crowd without anything to eat, Jesus summoned the disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will collapse on the way and some of them have come a great distance. His disciples answered him, Where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? Still he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They replied, Seven. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then, taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute, and they distributed them to the crowd. They also had a few fish. He said the blessing over them and ordered them distributed also. They ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets. There were about 4,000 people. He dismissed the crowd and got into the boat with his disciples and came to the reign of Dalmanutha. The Gospel of the Lord. Both of our readings today inspire in us a renewed confidence and trust in the providence of God. The feeding of the multitude, the multiplication of loaves and fish, always, that's always part of the lesson that we are reminded of when we hear that gospel. In fact, just as the gospel begins, we know the whole story. So we kind of like fast forward in our own mind. Oh yes, he's gonna multiply the loaves and fish. Everyone's gonna eat. Everyone's gonna be satisfied. A beautiful miracle, God providing for his people. And in this miracle, again, on a material level, simply providing them with bread to eat and fish. But we know that this parable, this, excuse me, the story of this beautiful miracle also reminds us of the spiritual nourishment which God provides us in the Eucharist. This feeding of the 4,000 in today's gospel is again a beautiful foreshadowing of the way that Jesus would provide the food for our soul, food for our spirit, the spiritual nourishment, of which we will partake shortly here at this holy sacrifice. In our first reading today, our confidence and trust is renewed in God because after the original sin, God had this conversation with Adam and Eve, asked him, what did you do? Why did you do it? And God provides the consolation of promising a redeemer in Genesis 3.15. It's what we refer to as the Proto-Evangelion, the first, the first mention in the Old Testament, in the Bible, of about this promise that after the sin itself, God would send a redeemer. There would be a remedy. God would send a savior. And that little promise, little, I guess just in the way it was expressed, that promise then became the foundation for centuries of prayer and hope and expectation and waiting for the Messiah, for the fulfillment of that promise, that God would send the Savior, the Redeemer, that would heal that wound of sin and would allow us to experience the fullness of God's mercy in the forgiveness of sins. And so even at the very beginning of the history of sin, sad and tragic as it is, 
Certainly we see the providence of God supporting his people by promising that there would be that beautiful opportunity to receive forgiveness. So these readings, in reminding us of the reasons why we should trust in God and rely on his providence, again, it's a beautiful way in which we can see that there are so many things in our Catholic life, in our Catholic faith, our Catholic experience, that are meant to encourage us and support us in our moments of difficulty. Not only our own personal moments, but the moments and the difficulties in the world around us. It's darkness, it's sin, it's you know, all the temptations and things that we struggle against. So many reasons why we can be always confident and trusting in the providence of God. He continues to nourish his people, not through the material multiplication of loaves and fish, but again, he nourishes us spiritually in so many ways. He continues to forgive sins. Day after day after day in confession, God is merciful and he forgives our sins. He provides us with so many beautiful examples in the history of the church and in our Catholic life to inspire us. Today, on this Saturday in ordinary time, we honor Our Lady. She to whom we turn for all of our special needs, our urgent intentions. First and foremost, she is our mother in heaven. She is our special intercessor. We can and we do go to her with the utmost confidence, tremendous trust. Our prayers, when we offer them to Our Lady, she purifies them, she strengthens them, she offers them then to God our Father and to her son Jesus. Again, another reason why we can be so confident and trusting in the providence of God. Despite, again, all the difficulties that we face, that the church faces, that the world is facing, God did indeed send his son to redeem the world. He did. And God and the son accomplished that beautiful fact. And Our Lady is for us, again, a constant reminder of that love that God shows for us. May we bring all of our urgent intentions together today at this Holy Mass, uniting them to the sacrifice of Jesus for our families, for our community, for our church, for our world, all these urgent intentions, so much to pray for. And in a certain sense, so much we could say, well, so much to be concerned about, not so much worry about, but so much to be concerned about. But let's let that concern translate into our trust in God. Perhaps this is the time, we are, of course, beginning Lent on Wednesday this week. So we know that in offering these prayers, taking these urgent intentions through our Blessed Mother to our God, that we will be filled with that trust and confidence. And may God continue to inspire us always to be grateful for every way he provides for us, nourishing our souls, forgiving our sins, and allowing us to experience the beautiful power of the communion of all the saints in their prayers and intercession for us. Aware of God's goodness and providence in our lives, let us offer our prayers of petition to him. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, may they be strengthened in their ministry of preaching the truth of salvation to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For all government officials, may God inspire them in enacting policies that protect human life from conception to natural death, as well as the gift of religious freedom throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick or suffering, that they may offer their pains and sorrows in union with those of Jesus, and so receive consolation and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may grow in holiness through all the ways in which God inspires us each day. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died, especially for the repose of the soul of Augustina Zaraga, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be welcomed into the joy and peace of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, accept these prayers which we bring to you today. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton as assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from it. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Blessed is the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father.
Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption, through Christ our Lord. So later this morning at 9.30, actually, there'll be another Mass, a special Mass, the opening Mass for the next 40 Days for Life campaign, for, of course, prayer to an end of abortion and all the other pro-life intentions. So 9.30, Father Allen will be here from the Abbey to celebrate that Mass. Then in regard to next week, on Monday, it's a holiday, President's Day. We'll have just one Mass on Monday. It's going to be at 9 a.m., holiday schedule. Then beginning on Tuesday of next week, we will resume the 6.30 a.m. weekday Mass. So again, beginning on Tuesday. And then moving forward, we'll have the 6.30 a.m. Mass again uh, Monday through Friday. So again, Monday, special schedule. Mass at 9 a.m., and then beginning on Tuesday, we include the 6.30 a.m. Mass in the schedule. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.